Okay, good afternoon, everybody. I'm going to call this meeting to order. I can see that all the commissioners are present. The uh, minutes of January 20th were sent out. Everybody's had a chance to take a look at those. Any additions or corrections? I need a motion to approve the motion. Okay, uh, any discussion? Anybody opposed? We can call the minutes approved. I understand we have some visitors today, so uh, in consideration, we're going to probably let those folks, a couple of people, have signed up to talk. So we're going to go right to that part of our meeting. Uh, the rest of the meeting is kind of long and involved, and spare you folks some of that pain, if you will. So, uh, Mr. Davis, I believe that you're ready. You're please remember we have a five minute uh, per speaker limit. So this does not work, is that correct? That's correct. This does not work. It does not. Does not. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Scott Davis, PO Box 11315, Knoxville, Tennessee, 37939. I appreciate y'all getting the opportunity to speak to you today. A boxer has the dignity to know not to strike his opponent while his opponent lays face down on the mat in a boxing match. A hockey player has the dignity to know not to kick his opponent in the face once his opponent is laying on the ice at the end of a fight. KDB is kicking developers in the face and punching us in the back of the head while we lay face down on the mat. What y'all are doing to us in the developing industry and your, and your calls and letter of credit is unconscionable. During the past 12 years, I've developed 39 subdivisions in Knox County, giving KDB well over 1,200 new customers at low or no risk to KDB. I understand you guys have a fiduciary responsibility to the ratepayers. But you do not have the right to unfairly and unjustly profit off the back, backs of developers. You guys may or may not be aware of the arbitrary and capricious nature by which the new service department enters into contractual agreements with developers. Unfortunately, we are not all playing on the same field. We're not allowed to have the same men on the field at the same time. For years, we have objected to <coughs> the credits KDB was granting for new service customers for both gas and electric. Reimbursement figure of $400 per customer for electric, for electric and $763 for gas are arbitrary figures and were based on very old consumption models and were never increased or adjusted for larger homes, <coughs> utility cost increase, or increased demand for utility services on a per household basis. As of June 1st of 2010, KUB will now refund $650 for overhead and $800 for electric customers. Obviously, the $400 number you all are using is antiquated. In a response letter I received from KEB's Mike Bowen dated October 20th, 2010, Mr. Bowen states, and I quote, KEB delivers utility service to developments like yours through extension models that calculate the cost of utility infrastructure and provide an allowance for new customer additions to KUV system. When was this model created? I don't know. It's amazing that every time the quote model is calculated, it comes up with the same cost per linear foot and the same calculation on a reimbursement on a per customer basis. Help me understand how a 1,200 square foot subdivision per house and a 5,000 square foot home subdivision have the same rate of refund per customer back to the developer. Also, how does a eight unit subdivision and a 50 unit subdivision have the same four year build out requirement? They're not the same and they can't be calculated the same. If the developer installs new gas service, KB reimburses at a rate of $5 per linear foot. When KB installs the gas service, they charge the developer $6.50 a foot. Why is there a discrepancy? KB claims to have a long history supporting economic development in our region. Apparently, KB's desire to support economic development in our region does not include the housing and development industry. KB supports the housing and development industry 
as long as that industry supplies new customers at a very rapid rate. If that rate slows down, you stick it to us. I have several subdivisions that I was forced to pay out of pocket on the front end for gas and electric. I'm very confident after an audit, evaluation of consumption, and an economic analysis was conducted, KB made a substantial profit from my work. KB should have been giving credits back to developers when subdivisions exceeded their original four-year goal. What is KB doing now? For years, KB has been granting, has not been granting a fair and equitable per customer reimbursement for gas and electric. <coughs> and I'm very confident again that an audit would find that to be true. KB refused to extend the development contracts for new developments, which could have given developers a longer period of time for which to develop new customers. Internally, KUB amortizes their cost over a 15 year period, although they demand payment from us in four years. Why? KUB is calling in bonds and lines of credit putting developers at risk. I stand here today representing the developers in this community and watch KUV punch us in the back of the head and kick us in the face. At the same time, you claim to be good stewards of our community and you claim to be proponents of economic development. What KUV has done to me, the developers in this community, again, is unconscionable and absolutely disgraceful. I respectfully request that KUV do an audit of the new service department. Because I think you will find what I have stated here is factually correct. Are you all willing to do that? I doubt it. I also think you should have a task force set up to look into these facts. Are you all willing to do that? I doubt it. You all will continue to kick us in the face and you will continue to punch us in the back of the head and you claim to be good stewards of our community and proponents of economic development. I don't think that is true. Thank you. I understand there's some other gentlemen here that maybe along the same lines. Well, Mr. Smith, did you want to? Okay, Mr. Smith. Mr. I'm not here to speak on that, but I'll, I'll go if you to. Uh, is there anybody else in this particular topic? Okay, Mr. Smith, you're up there. <laughs> okay, I'm on, I'm on the same topic. Though. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Scott Smith, and um, I'm here actually at the request of my dad. He's uh, out of town, and he just wanted me to relay a situation that occurred on February 5th. Um, he, li he lives at 1903. Westmoreland you know, Hills Boulevard and was out of town, received a phone call. Um, the fire department was dispatched, his firearm and his house went off, and they were dispatched and they came to the house and were dragging hoses out, getting ready to kick the door in. Fortunately, a neighbor came by and opened the house up and it was completely engulfed with smoke. And it turned out it wasn't, it was, it, it, the KUB was doing a sewer line test and and they had, in, for some reason, filled the house with a vapor of some kind. And uh, he was actually, he was really upset about it. Fortunately, the neighbor stopped before they sprayed the house, but it was so thick, you could not see it from the front door to the back door. And, uh, you know, he's been um, kind of upset about that and, and uh, understands that you guys have a responsibility to do things and check the lines, but he didn't feel like that that was, an acceptable result. Um, and I don't really know that I'm asking you to do anything uh, other than being able to tell him that I did what he asked me to do and, come, and I made you aware of what happened. Um, so I guess that's, that's really it. He was, he was, he's upset about it, obviously, so maybe, you know, if you guys could maybe take some measures to make sure something like that doesn't happen in the future, um, it might be good. So. Did the vapor clear out, or was there residual damage? Or um, I, you know, I don't, I don't, to be honest with you, I don't think there was damage, but 
Which is um, very upsetting to have. Yeah, I mean, it was the fire department, you know, spent a lot of time there, and it was, it was, uh, I guess, pretty much all the smoke they pumped in the line basically went in his house, and I think they determined it was a dried out drain trap somewhere, maybe, uh -huh. that, that, that caused that to happen. But. Did somebody call, did you call in? Did anybody call KB on the cell phone or anything? There was a crew down the street, so I guess they know about it. I personally all were aware of it immediately after it happened, did respond and work with the customer the fire department and others there involved. And I, like you said, I think it was a dry trap. They were doing routine testing of the sewer line. <coughs> Normally that, unless there's a, pro, a plumbing problem or a dry trap or something, the smoke that you use to test the sewer line can't get up into a lateral and into a home. In this case, it did because of that dry trap. So it's smoke, it's it's harmless. Uh, I think the uh, claims folks that were involved uh, indicated there didn't appear to be any sustained damage or lasting damage. Uh, I guess just a little bit of odor and, and uh, concern about the smoke initially that has gone away. But it is an unusual circumstance, but it can happen if there's a plumbing problem uh, on property when that smoke test is occurring. So your, your dad's he splits time between Knoxville and out of town, doesn't he? That's right, yeah. yeah. He was in Fort Myers, and uh, yeah. I, mean, I know we tried to, I mean, we give notice we to individual customers, but in a situation like this, I mean, it may have been, you know, hang on the door. Of I think, no, and, and they, he said that there had been, the KUB representative said they had placed a, yeah. a leaflet on some doorknobs, but, you know, in the event someone is out of town, yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> you know, that, I don't know. I'm just that's what happened. Yeah. So. Well, tell your dad we're sorry. I will. It was unfortunate, and, and I'm sorry it did happen. Okay, I'll tell him. Yeah. Bill, Bill, none of our this whole process of testing area would, would involve a private lateral or a situation where that, even with notice, that would occur. Yeah, well, even uh, with notice, that would have occurred. Uh, now, I think our, if I recall correctly, uh, we do indicate in that letter that. Uh, Customers should make an effort to make sure that their their traps are are full, that there's that there's no dry traps in there. So a customer who got that letter who might suspect they have a dry trap <coughs> could go and, and address that issue. Most people wouldn't necessarily think about that or be, be aware of it in many cases. But had that individual been home when it happened, he probably would have made a connection between the, the notice and what was going on. Uh, it wouldn't have stopped it, but it would at least maybe have prevented the fire department from, from uh, rolling <coughs> it out. And, 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 yeah, I think it, set, it set the alarm off. So yeah. it's not good. So anyway, the customer would have been better advised had he been home, but <coughs> changed the end result. Yeah, tell them we're sorry about that. <laughs> All righty. Uh, I understand we have a Natalie Mims.
Good afternoon, Commissioners. As you recall, last month I presented some information on the real-time pricing option, a, an optional program from TVA geared at the large industrial commercial customers being served at over 5,000 kilowatt. Um, this is an incentive for them to utilize this program to shift their load to lower cost periods of time. Uh, it's two parts as the title, as the name of the program uh, implies. The first part is a baseline where they pay the standard firm rate for that baseline. The second part of the rate, of the optional rate, allows them to, if they use less power than what their baseline, they can actually receive credits, therefore incenting them to use less power during more expensive peak times during the middle of the day. <coughs> and if they use over that baseline, then they would pay whatever the market rate is. Therefore, uh, TDA not having to generate for those flexibilities, they can actually uh, uh, pass on the increased cost during those peak times to customers who sign up for this program. So it's really geared at these customers who have a little bit of flexibility in their production schedule, schedules to ship below. Uh, TDA, as we discussed last time, uh, will provide all the billing information to us that we will simply take the numbers of those real-time costs throughout the month and apply directly onto the bills. There'll be no additional cost incurred to, to uh, KEB, nor will there be any impact uh, to our margin based off of actual energy being used out there. This resolution uh, authorizes our participation in this uh, program, the two-part real-time pricing program. It authorizes our president and CEO to enter, enter into necessary agreements with TDA and with customers and creates a, a rate schedule for the electric division. This program would be effective if passed by the uh, commissioners upon the second reading of uh, March 1st of 2011. This time, if there's any additional questions, we have to entertain. So no, nothing's changed in the details of the program since we approved it on first reading? No, sir. Right. I'm just going to approve it on second reading. Second. Yeah, we have a question. Um, we have a motion and a second. We'll go to questions. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are some uh, procedures, right? There was some uh, doubt as to when this might be implicated, uh, implemented. Um, I think we're talking April. Is that is that still on track for that, or is it past that date? Or this this particular program is effective March one. Some of the ad additional wholesale price changes that will be discussed later on in the, pro later on in the uh, session today have an effective date of April 1st. But this is a supplemental optional program that rides on the pilot programs that were passed by the board this past fall. Other questions? Are there any comments or questions out there? I believe we'll go to the roll call vote. Mr. Cole. <coughs> Mr. Anderson. Aye. Mr. Connell. Aye. Mr. Jones. Aye. Mr. Robinson. Aye. Mr. Simmons. Aye. Mr. Thompson. Aye. Commissioner Williams. Aye. Resolution 1237 has passed on second reading.